Hi, I'm Joel Lort with Miller, and we're here today to do a lawn roller repair. What happened was the customer left their roller out in the fall filled with water, and when it froze, it pushed the ends out about an inch, so it broke the bearings and we need to replace this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is replace the end cap here. We're gonna make a new axle, make some new gussets, weld everything together, and uh, the products I'll be using today are the Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme, and the Miller Matic 211 Auto Set. And so what I'm gonna do first is start with the plasma cutter and cut this circle out and make a new one to replace it. All right, so we, we have the end cut out of the lawn roller. And what we're gonna do from there is transfer that over to the piece of steel we bought to replace that. Um, but one thing we are going to do, the first time this was made, this was welded on the inside of this pipe. And instead of taking all the time to clean this weld out and everything, what I'm gonna do to save a little bit of time is take the new plate, make it slightly larger in diameter, and bring it to the outside of the pipe. It's just a lawn roller, it's not gonna be a big deal. So. I took the, uh, the original piece that we cut out, set it on our steel, and then I just by hand took a marker and went about a half inch roughly around the outside to get it to that larger diameter. So our next step then will be to cut this out, uh, maybe do a little bit of trimming on the edge to make it you know, perfect for here, and then, uh, and then weld that in place. Okay, so we finished cutting out the uh, replacement piece of quarter inch steel with the Spectrum 625 Extreme. And now what we need to do is fit it up to the end of the pipe here. And what I'm gonna do, since this is going to the outside, and I need to, I need to run that bead around the outside of here between the end cap and the pipe, and I need to have this, uh, the end cap centered. So I'm gonna take a piece of eighth inch steel um, because I cut this slightly smaller than the diameter of the pipe, and that will hold it um, up for me and give me the same gap hopefully all the way around here and once I check that make sure that that gap looks good So I have a nice place to weld um, Then what we'll need to do is clean this edge up with the grinder and from there we can uh, put the cap on and weld that in place All right, well everything looks good so from here, I will just, I'll clean the pipe then, as I mentioned, and we should be ready to tack weld it and uh, finish weld it in place then. Okay, so we, we finished grinding the, uh, the, the pipe for the roller, and our, our next step is going to be to weld the new end cap on. And uh, with the Miller Matic 211 Auto Set, uh, one of the things, a couple of things actually, that I really like about this machine, um, for myself is that it is dual voltage. You can plug it into 120 or 240. And uh, I like that. Sometimes I borrow my machine out to a friend that doesn't have 240 like I do, or I can take this machine anywhere. Um, the other thing that I like from a, a homeowner's point of view is the chart to help me out. Um, in, in my settings, I'm not a professional welder and being a homeowner guy, that, that really helps me set it for, for what I'm doing. So what we're gonna be doing is the pipe is a, a 3 8 inch thick wall pipe. Our cap is a quarter inch and what I typically do is set the machine for the thicker steel and then I will start on there and kind of wash it into the quarter inch um, and that that works well for me. So that's what, how I'm going to set this machine up and then we'll get started welding the cap on. Okay, so we're done welding the end cap on. <clears throat> the next thing that I'm probably gonna do is uh, I'll go around and clean up anything that's on the outside because I, I cut this piece by hand. And so a couple, a couple times it got close to the outside of the pipe and my weld was a little over the top. I wanna grind that flush. Um, after that, what we're gonna do is um, a little trick for finding the center of the end here for uh, welding the axle on. We'll cut the axle 
and then um, I'll mark that and we'll weld that into place and from there do the gussets. Okay, for the, for the next step to the project, what we need to do is find the center point of our end cap here. Um, you might ask, why didn't I do that before welding it on? And the reason I didn't was because the, I, I used the portion that I cut out as a pattern and it was not perfectly round. Um, it was good enough to weld onto here, but now that it is welded on, I can use the pipe itself because that I know the circumference is round and I can use that for the measurements I need. Um, now the trick here, uh, it's a very easy trick. What you, what you can do is um, you're gonna wanna make, wind up making three lines at different points on the pipe or, or cords, if you remember your math. And then um, you're gonna need to cut that distance in half and then you put this at the half point and then you make your line. And you'll do that in all three places and if you did it good enough, they, all three of those should cross and that will be the center point of the pipe. So um, what I'm gonna do, because it makes it easy and the pipe is large enough, um, this is a full 16 inches. I can lay that up there very easily, find the eight inch mark and draw my three lines. Once I have that center point, on each one of those lines I can take from the center point and come out um, a half inch each direction, which will give me one inch overall. Um, the axle is a one inch diameter axle that will be welded to here. So all I have to do is lay that in place and it'll be dead center and weld it and we'll be good to go. So that'll be the next step. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw these three lines. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we found the center point. We're pretty darn close. That will be right here. And I'll make my measurement one inch each direction. I take that back, it's a half inch each direction for one inch overall. Okay, so that's where our axle, axle will uh, be welded to. And after that, we will make the gussets and weld those on also. Okay, so we found, we found our center point on the end cap. We have our lines marked for the one inch diameter axle. I have the axle cut, so now I'm gonna take um, one of these magnets. I use uh, quite a bit of these at home here. It'll hold the axle in place on my pipe and at the same time, it will hold it at 90 degrees. Um, very handy tool to have. So what I'm gonna do now is it looks like we're in place. Just double check that it's square, 90 degrees. And from here, uh, now what I'll do is I'll tack weld this axle in three places so that it doesn't move um, when I finish welding all the way around. I'll tack weld it, I'll remove the magnet, finish welding. And from there, um, I have one gusset made already. I will make two more gussets just like this and we will take those and weld them in place onto the end cap in the axle and uh, that will hold the axle in place. It, it should be sturdy enough that it won't bend on me or anything. So um, we'll go ahead and get started doing that.
Okay, so we, we finished welding the axle and the three gussets on. And the uh, last step for the roller is going to be, uh, I have a coupling here with a plug and I'm gonna weld, weld this onto the plate in order to fill and uh, drain the roller. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, set this on here and make a mark. I'm gonna keep it close to the outside. It doesn't have to be all the way out there, but just close to drain as much water as possible. And there will be uh, the circle. I'm gonna cut this out with the plasma cutter and then I'm gonna slide the coupling into that hole maybe about halfway and then I'll weld the outside and we should be done. So we just finished the lawn roller repair. As you can see, it's reassembled on the lawnmower ready to roll. For more information on the products that we use today or project ideas like this, visit MillerWelds.com.